Hey Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here going over 3.03 .03, molarity. Now if you notice, you need your calculator and your periodic table again. So if you need to hit pause and go get your periodic table, please do that now. If you can't find it, it's also in the list of cheat sheets that the link is provided for at the beginning of every lesson. So make sure you have the periodic table. The concentration of a solution can be described in several ways. And so that's what we're going to be talking about over the next couple of lessons. So a solution, remember, is something dissolved in something else, or a solute dissolved in a solvent. And the concentration is, if you think about if you were tasting Kool-Aid, if it has a high concentration, it would have a lot of lemon and sugar. If it was dilute, it would taste very watery. So we're going to talk about the concentration of a solution, or how much solute is in the solvent, in a few different ways. So the first way, um, you don't have to write this down, this is just kind of an overview slide. If a liquid solute is dissolved in a liquid solvent, for example, then a volume volume percent might be the best way to describe the solution. So for example, when you buy rubbing alcohol at the store, it's 70% isopropanol and 30% water. The second way, a solid solute dissolved in a liquid solvent. So for example, sugar dissolved in water, meanwhile, would ideally be described in terms of a mass volume percent. But if the mass of a solvent is of interest, then the calculation should be performed to describe the concentration is moles per kilogram. So the first one that we're going to do is molarity. And molarity is a way to talk about the concentration of a solution. Specifically, make sure you write down this word and the definition. Molarity is a measure of the number of moles of a solute in one liter of a solution. So what that specifically means is that the whole solution is one liter total. So I tried to draw like a beaker and then the dark blue is the solution. So one liter makes up all your solute plus your solvent. And molarity is specifically how many moles of the solute are in this whole liter of solution. The unit for molarity is moles per liter, or a capital italicized M. So if you notice, this M is slanted instead of a regular capital M, because that stands for something else, it needs to be italicized. I'm not going to quiz you on that or make sure, but I did want you to know that it actually is supposed to be italicized. I will try and use moles per liter more often than the capital M, because this unit is more helpful because it reminds you that it's the number of moles per one liter. Molarity is used when the solute is a solid and the solvent is a liquid. So let's do some math. What is the molarity of 50 moles of sulfur in 30 liters of water? Okay, where do we start? So I gave you two things. I gave you 50 moles of sulfur and 30 liters of water. We're trying to find the molarity. So we need to remind ourselves what molarity is. Molarity is simply the number of moles divided by the amount of liters. So if you think you can do this, hit pause and get your answer. And so what we're going to write down is how many moles we have, 50 moles, divide it by how many liters we have, and we get 1.67. Okay, 1.67 what? What would our units be? Well, we have moles divided by liters. Can we cancel them? No, because they're different. Moles and liters are different, so we cannot cancel them. So our unit is simply moles per liter. Or you could write it as 1.67 capital italicized M. Or you could say it's 1.67 molar. Okay? Personally, I think this way is the easiest. 1.67 moles per liter. But like I said, you can also use the capital italicized M and you can use the word molar. Quick review. What is the molar mass of water? So let's look at this vocab word, molar mass. Mass of what? Molar mass is mass of a mole. All right, so let's do water. Hydrogen has a molar mass of 1.0079 grams per mole. Oxygen has a molar mass of 15.999 grams per mole. And let's round both of these numbers to hundredths. Okay, and so when we do, we get that hydrogen is 1.01, .01, and I times it by two. Why did I times it by two? Because every water molecule has two atoms 
of hydrogen. So I need to account for both atoms of hydrogen plus my oxygen. And when I add that up, I get 18.02 grams per mole. That means one mole of water has a mass of 18.02 grams. So that was a review from before. If you're looking at this going, I do not remember how to do that, please come see me for help. So what is the molarity of 50 grams of sulfur in 30 liters of water? Okay, it's close to the same problem in that the numbers are the same, but look what changed. The first time I started out with moles, this time I said we have grams. Okay, what do we do first? Make a list of what you know. We know 50 grams of sulfur, 30 liters of water. We want the molarity, which is moles per liter. So we have liters. What do we need to do? Got to change grams into moles. How do we do that? Start with what you know. We know we need to change grams of sulfur to moles of sulfur. And so we start with what we know, which is 50 grams of sulfur. Okay, then we're going to put this 50 grams over 1. What's going to be the unit on the bottom of my next fraction? I want it to cancel, so the unit down here has to be grams of sulfur. And what do I want my final answer in? I'm converting to moles. So 1 mole is 32.07, right? I got that from the periodic table, 32.07 grams of sulfur. In your calculator, you would put 50 times 1 divided by 1 divided by 32.07, or you can ignore the 1s and just put 50 divided by 32.07, and that gives you 1.56 moles of sulfur. Are we done? Nope, because I want molarity. I want the moles per liter. So I have to put 1.56 moles divided by the fact that I have 30 liters, and my answer is 0 0.05 what? What would the units be? Moles per liter or molar, or capital M, italicized. All right, let's look at another one. Find the molarity of 100 mils solution containing 2.94 grams of H2SO4. What should our unit for volume be? Our unit for volume for molarity is liters. How do you change 100 milliliters into liters? Do you remember how to do that? So you had to move the decimal how many places? Three places to the left. All right, so it would become 0.1 liter. So we write down what we know. We have 0.1 liter of solution and 2.94 grams of our solute. And we want to find the molarity. So go ahead and hit pause, see if you can do this one on your own. So we're going to calculate the molar mass of H2SO4 from the masses given on the periodic table. And we end up with 98.1 grams. And we change our 2.94 grams divided by the fact that there's 98.1 grams per mole. The grams cancel out. And if you notice, they put the 0.1 liter down here. I like to do that at the end. It really doesn't matter if you do it all at once or at the end. You're going to get 0.3 moles per liter. Now you'll also see that this one did the rounding a little different. I did copy this one from K12, mostly because I wanted to show you that if you want to put the liters in, you can as part of your fraction. Personally, I think it's easier to get your moles first and then divide by your liters. But whatever works for you. Okay, 5 capital M, or 5 moles per liter. What that really means, there's 5 moles of solute in 1 liter of a solution. So here's a 2 liter bottle, and you've probably seen the 20 ounce bottles. Well, more and more they're coming out with the 1 liter bottles, so just an idea of there'd be 5 moles in 1 liter of solution. 12 molars, well that means 12 moles of solute in 1 liter of a solution. So they added 12 moles of the solute, and then they kept adding water until they had a total of 1 liter of solution. So put 12 moles of solute in a container and then fill it with water until you have one liter total of the solution. Sorry, my word solution ran off the edge of the page. And can kind of see it at the bottom. Solution. 
okay? So one molar, one molar means one mole of a solute in one liter of a solution. To prepare a 0.5 molar solution of sodium chloride, a chemist needs water in the proper amount of table salt. Once the chemist knows the number of grams of NaCl that is equivalent or the same as 0.5 moles, she adds solvent, which is water in this case. Remember, the solvent is usually water. And they add the solvent to the solute, the table salt, and swirls the flask to dissolve the sodium chloride. After the solute is dissolved, she adds water until it measures exactly one liter. The result is a 0.5 molar solution of sodium chloride. So that's how you would do it in an actual lab. So how many grams of NaCl should be used to get a 0.5 molar solution of sodium chloride? So if you think you can do this one, hit pause, try it yourself. And we want to think of what 0.5 molar means. It really means we have 0.5 moles of solute are in one liter. So 0.5 moles, what's going to go on the bottom of my next fraction? Moles. And what do I got to change it into? What am I looking for? Oh, I'm looking for grams. All right, so look on your periodic table. What's the molar mass of NaCl or what's the mass of one mole of NaCl? 58.44. And put it in your calculator, 0 0.5 times 58.44, and you get 29.22 grams would be used for making a 0.5 molar solution. So you would put this amount into a beaker, and you would keep adding water and mixing it up and dissolving until you had a total of one liter. Okay, that's almost it for this lesson. I am going to back up and... I'm going to offer some extra credit because technically in these problems, I made a mistake. It shouldn't have been 30 liters of water. It should have been 30 liters of what? Because the definition of moles per liter of blank. So the definition of molarity, let me say that again. The definition of molarity is the number of moles per liter of blank. I shouldn't have said water. I should have said something else. So if you know what that something else is, you can k-mail me. Just k-mail me and say 3.03 .03 molarity instead of liters of water. You should have said liters of blank. And if you're looking at this being like, I have no idea, well, k-mail it to me that you don't know, but you listened and you'd like to know the answer. All right, um, that's it. Go ahead and you can look at the pre-quiz and check your own answers, and as always, let me know if you need help.